Today I'm going to show you how to use the app PixWriter to make a quick and easy activity for your students to get them typing and get them writing. So I'm going to open up PixWriter and if you were to tap the question mark up at the top, it takes you to a user guide, which is really helpful to know that it's here. So as you go through, you can see in the contents, it shows you how to customize a button, edit a button, change the text display on a button, how to get students to use it, and so on to export, import images. So everything that you need is right here that you're going to see in this screencast today. So I'm going to click the X and I'm going to click on new file. When I click on new file, it's going to take me to the place where I can start entering in the words that I might want my student to use in their writing. Now, this may not be all the words, but it may be some words that I anticipate that they might want to use, and they can always go back and add in additional words later. So we're talking about Christmas in class, so maybe we can put in some words as far as things that they might see. So I'm gonna start typing, and if you see a dog pop up under the word I, we'll address that later. So I'm gonna put I see presents, I see a stocking, I see Santa, I see cookies, and so on. So I'm going to tap I, capital I, capital I, C, 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 presents, presents, presents. Oh, so since it says presents, let's try this. Gifts, gifts, gifts. There we go. Now I don't have to type I see again, and I'll show you why in just a second. You only need to type each word one time to get it down at the bottom to show up as a button. So I'm also going to put in here stocking. 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 I'm going to type Santa. 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 Cookies. 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 Slay. 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 How about some snow? Snow. Snow. You do want to make sure when you finish typing your last button or your last idea that you hit the space bar so that it will officially add it as a button. If you type it and do not hit the space, it does not add it to your choices. But I also want to do, instead of I see gifts, you could say, maybe they want to say, I see some gifts. Son. Son. Or maybe I see my gifts. My. My. Or I see a sleigh. Bay, bay. and so on. So I'm going to put those words in there for them to choose. Once you have your ideas in, hit the yellow grid button in the lower left. And this is going to show all the different buttons that you've typed in. Notice it shows presents and gifts. Because I officially typed in presents and put the space bar, it added it as a button. So that's the reason why you don't want to write I see, I see, I see, because you will see that repeated multiple times down below. And we don't need it. We only need it once um, for them to choose from. So now I'm going to start taking these buttons and moving them into a way that makes more sense for a student to see it visually. So to do that, I'm just going to start tapping on the buttons and dragging them where I want them on the screen. So I'm going to put, let's see all my nouns over here. Um, oh, we'll take snow, put that over here. Um, here's presents. Uh, some, my, hey, let's do this. So you can see how I kind of spread this out. I see, and they can choose some, my, or a, and then they can choose what they're, what they see over on the side. However, I don't want gifts and presents at the same time. So if you tap the button, now you have some options here. I'm going to click clear, which will completely clear this as a button and delete it from my choices. And it's gone. The other thing you can do, and I'm looking specifically at the dog, I'm going to edit that button. And for some reason, this keeps the dog as a default. I was playing around with it, and now for some reason, it always defaults to my dog. So I can choose instead of the dog, I can choose 
um, a male. Now in settings, I can change that to female as well if you have a female user. So I can change that to male. Or I could choose one of these. Um, so I'm just going to choose the boy. But check this out. Where it says button text at the top, If I, the button says capital I. Down below, it's going to tell me how it's pronounced. So when it says say as, if you tap that audio button, capital I. Capital I. it actually says capital I, which I don't want it to say capital I as they're typing. So if I just make this a lowercase letter I and click done, then I've saved it as lowercase letter I. So watch what happens if I hit the audio. I. I. Now it's just an I. So you can change the pronunciation if it's not matching up the way you want it to. Over on the right hand side, under the preview of the image, you'll see the done button. So I'm going to tap done. And now those changes have been reflected on my page. The other thing that you might notice when you tap on a button is you do have the duplicate options. You can duplicate buttons if you want, if you do want them on there more than once. Um, you can also choose no image at all which will take the image away. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can choose a color border to go around it. Now, if you, that's completely optional. We have seen some teachers color code the, the buttons according to the Fitzgerald key. So the nouns have the same color, uh, pronouns have same color, verbs have same color, the adjectives have the same color and so on. But that's optional. I'm not going to do that, however. What I'm going to do now is I am going to go up into my settings, which is the gear in the upper right-hand corner. And this looks like a lot at first, but let's go through it one step at a time. On the left, where it says program, program settings, you can choose a different voice. So you could change it to a male or female voice. Or it can also read in an accent, like an Australia accent, a British accent, and so on, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it as a U.S. voice. You can change the text rate to, fast, to read faster or slower. You can even change when you want the text-to-speech to start. Maybe you only want it reading where the cursor is on the page, or always start at the beginning of the document. You can change that. You can leave it so it says text to speech while the kid is typing on the keyboard so that it will read the words as they type, which is good audio feedback for them. So there's lots of different options here. Notice where it says disable document keyboard. What that's going to do after you save the document. Um, if you disable the keyboard, the students do not have a choice to type anything other than the buttons you have provided them, which can be very limiting in what you want, what they may want to say, especially if they're nonverbal and they don't have any other way to try to um, communicate. So if they have the option, or even verbal students, maybe they want to say, say something like, I see my elf, like elf on the shelf. Um, if you leave the keyboard available, they could go to the keyboard button and type in elf and go back to your the buttons and continue their document. So it gives them the flexibility and you as the teacher flexibility to add things that you didn't anticipate and have it be more of an authentic instructional experience. Okay, so down here under disable document keyboard, which I'm not gonna, going to check, you can also change the female and male pronouns down here. You'll see it changing in the background or you can choose no image at all, so it's up to you. In the middle here, under document settings, you can change the number of cells. So I'm on 24 right now because I want to be able to spread them out. You can also do 36 and you can see how that changes. You could go all the way up to 64, but you could go all the way down to four buttons, but I'm gonna keep it on 24 for now because I think that's a good starting point for what I want them to do in this particular activity. You can increase the font, increase the image sizes, and so on. So over under document info, there's five buttons. When I click lock, that's going to lock my, my document so that when I type on the paper, 
it's not going to continue to add buttons down below. Because right now, anytime I type, it's going to add a button. It thinks I'm building the activity. So you want to keep these documents locked as students are interacting with the activity. Um, I am going to keep the document keyboard on the page. So I'm going to click lock. However, you don't want to give the activity to the student when it already has typing on the page. So you could hit the backspace button, which is right to the upper left of the Santa Claus icon, which is that arrow pointing back with the X. I can tap that and individually delete. Or a faster way is to go into settings and tap one of those five buttons that says clear. So when I click clear, it clears everything all at once. I want to save this so I don't lose my hard work. So in the gray bar where it says tap here to save, I'm going to tap on that. And I'm going to call this Christmas 6 because I have lots of Christmas activities in there right now. Christmas 6. I'm going to click the check mark in the upper right. And now it's saved. So next to Christmas 6, you'll see the lock. It's closed. It's locked. It's ready to go. I still have my keyboard available above my button grid. So if I click the keyboard, I can go in here. The students can, the teacher or the students can go in and add additional words or numbers. Um, and it's ready to go. So if you were, if you did this ahead of time, you're probably going to come to this page when you first open the app. So you click saved files. And you pick the activity you want your students to do. So I'm going to click Christmas 6 and hit the blinking button in the upper right to go. Then I can put this in front of my students and they can start to interact. I, I see, see my, my stocking. stocking. I, I see, see some sun cookies. cookies. And so on. But maybe they want to say, I see my elf. I, I, I see, see, see my, my. my. There's no elf there. I can tap on the keyboard icon and type in elf. 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 And then go back to my yellow grid button. And notice how elf was not placed on the choices down below because it's locked. We're not adding buttons to this activity but you still have the flexibility to add in additional items if you want or if the student wants. If you click the eyeball on that blue bar, it's going to hide the grid so that you can see the document a little bit more clearly. And if you hit the audio icon next to it, it will read your entire document. I see my stocking, I see some cookies, I see my elf. And then I'm going to click the eyeball again and my grid pops up again. When you're finished and the student's done their writing, you may want to save this, okay? And saving it in the app is not really an option, okay? So what you're going to do is you need to export this. The only option you have to export this is as a PDF to your Google Drive. So to do that, you're going to click um, not the share button, which you would think, you're going to click the gear settings and go to the print button from the button list on the right. Print, so this, print document. this document. And then I'm going to click print and choose Google Drive. And it's saving it as a PDF. So if I have more than one student doing this, I might want to put in the student's name, Sam Christmas activity six and then click upload and it's going to save that into my drive and now i can go onto my computer into google drive find sam christmas six i can double click it it will open as a pdf and i can see all his writing just as you see here i can also print it out if i want a hard copy or i can share it with other teachers or his family into this and there is one thing I failed to show you so let me go into 
unlock this document so I can edit it. So I'm going to click unlock. And what if I want to change the picture on the button and I click the button and I can go into edits. I can also choose a different picture here. I could choose these cookies um, and it will try to give you some suggestions of built-in clip art or you can do a web search for cookies and it brings you to a Bing search and you can choose a different icon here which is where I had the photo of the cookies to begin with. And then you would just select what you want and it would pop it in. That's where these cookies came from, was from the Bing search. This was there by default. And then you just click done and you can easily change the picture out from the icon that you're looking at. If you were to click the share button here, this is really meant to share the activity file, but it does not work on Google Drive. So if you needed to share this activity, um, to another iPad, the easiest way to do that in your classroom is with AirDrop. So when you hit AirDrop, it's going to send, you see at the top where it says Christmas 6 PixWriter 4 document, that's the actual activity. The only way to get this activity onto another iPad right now is either through email, which isn't an option on student iPads, or AirDrop. So you would AirDrop this to another um, iPad that has PixWriter on it, okay? But to remind you, if you want to print it or save it as a PDF, you go to the gear, you click print, it's going to save it as a PDF, you click print, you choose Google Drive, and then you can change the name and then click upload, and that will take you to your Google Drive. So in the meantime, I hope this was helpful, and you should now pretty much have everything you need to know to get started in PixWriter. And when you're done, reset the document to clear, tap on the top to save, and I'm actually going to set it to lock this activity, and then click save again. So now it's ready to go for another student to interact with.